Hello, my name is Andrew Genovins, and I'm the third bassoonist and contrabassoonist for the Grand Rapids Symphony. Today I'm going to be giving you a demonstration of the contrabassoon, a woodwind instrument that sits near the back of the orchestra in the bassoon section. I first saw a contrabassoon in my high school private teacher's studio. My teacher had it sitting in the corner, and I was just mesmerized by it. I mean, look at it. It looks like it belongs in a submarine. After getting to try the instrument a few times, I began to play the contrabassoon in college when I was assigned to play it for the first orchestra concert of the year. I quickly got help from my teacher learning the basics of the instrument and began to practice it just as seriously as I practiced my bassoon. I have been playing the contrabassoon for almost 11 years now. The contrabassoon and the bassoon are very similar in that they use similar fingerings and reeds. Now the reed is much bigger than a bassoon reed and sounds very low. <laughs> Also, the, there are no open tone holes on the contrabassoon, as you can see, so you use these keys to play your notes, and they're on all sides of the instrument. There's the back side, and it has double the amount of tubing that the bassoon has. Now, do you think that's going to make it higher or lower than the bassoon? Let me start at the top of my instrument's range and work my way down, and let's see what happens. In fact, the contrabassoon is the lowest sounding instrument in the entire orchestra, playing a full octave lower than the bassoon. My favorite part about the contrabassoon is that it is the foundation of the woodwind section and plays a very important role in the orchestra. The contrabassoon often plays dark and mysterious lines that creep up through the orchestra, like this one excerpt from Gustav Mahler's Ninth Symphony. Another role of the contrabassoon in the orchestra is when it plays music similar to the string bass, the closest relatable instrument in the string family to the contrabassoon, as they both play in a low range. Beethoven would often write the same parts for contrabassoon and bass, making them really athletic and exciting and have this super dark and thick texture, as you'll see in this excerpt here. <laughs> Finally, and more rarely found, the contrabassoon will be given the melody, often depicting large animals or dark creatures, as depicted here in a movement from Ravel's Mother Goose Suite, titled Conversations of Beauty and the Beast. Can you tell whether or not the contrabassoon is the beauty or the beast in this section? I hope you've enjoyed learning about the contrabassoon. It is such a quirky and unique instrument, and it is so much fun to play. I will leave you now with a short excerpt from one of Johann Sebastian Bach's cello suites, performed here on the contrabassoon.